Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold The Fafnir Knight is a party-based RPG that will see you questing to reach a fabled castle in the clouds. Odyssey games have been around since the first Nintendo DS. This installment is a revamped version of the second game in the series for the 3DS. It's an RPG for lovers of RPGs. Yes, and there are two ways to play this, story mode or classic mode. The difference being that while classic lets you build characters from scratch, story mode hands you a set cast of heroes and an abundance of dialogue scenes. My name is Ariana. I played in story mode, but I was able to name at least one character. These are the adventures of Bajo Poopy. I'm not sure that's the most heroic name you could have chosen, but anyway. I played in classic mode and created a whole custom team of good game heroes. But regardless of which mode you choose, you'll be playing through the same set of multi-floor dungeons. And these are heaps of fun to explore. They are very maze-like. And in fact, a key mechanic of Etrian Odyssey is using the bottom screen on the 3DS to do your own mapping. You can draw in walls and place things like doors or make a note of where the treasure is. You can get horribly lost if you don't chart your exploration. <laughs> yeah, it's just like old PC games where you had no auto map and you had to map it yourself with a pen and paper. You can turn auto map on if you really want to. But I found the map making really satisfying, knowing I'd mapped out an entire floor and found all the secrets. It can help prevent you from running into trouble, that's for sure. Because there are some fearsome monsters wandering around these labyrinths. Most encounters occur after a set number of steps your party takes, but more powerful monsters called foes actually show up on your map so that you can avoid them. Until you're strong enough to face them. Yeah, and that's a puzzle in itself, trying to get through a room without triggering a foe encounter. I was making them fall in holes or trapping them behind drawbridges. Anything to avoid fighting them. Oh, once in battle, however, you have a huge array of talents and skills to use against your enemy. Your melee fighters can do big punishing hits and deal massive damage, while your spellcasters, ranged fighters, or animal companions can soften up the enemy with curses, or even attempt to bind their arms or legs to stop them unleashing deadly attacks. Yeah, this is classic turn-based combat. Stressing over your finite supply of skill points as you juggle attacks with healing to keep your party up. There are some super tough boss fights. We died a lot, you guys. Yeah, I found the game quite difficult overall. I did a lot of backtracking to town to heal up in the inn and do some equipment management. Can I help you with anything else? Gaining those incremental upgrades to skills to find my next run just slightly easier. At times it felt like a bit of a grind, but I was still hooked. Yeah, you do find yourself going back through areas you've already mapped just to grind a bit of XP. I really appreciated that you could walk to entrances and exits of levels rather than walking it all in real time. Otherwise it would have been a real slog. Something that gives this RPG a unique flavour is the ability to combine ingredients to discover meal recipes. These can give your party certain buffs, and you can also advertise them to different areas of the town to earn cash while you're off adventuring. It's pretty quirky to have a cooking mechanic in this kind of RPG, but then this game has a lot of quirks. <laughs> I thought the dialogue was a bit goofy too, but I guess it all helps to give it some real personality and humour. Governance of High Lagarde. What are you saying? And that contrasts with the difficulty of the dungeon crawling. Mm. I think if you've not played many RPGs like this, you might find it a bit intimidating at first. I mean, there are 10 different character classes to choose from when you first create your heroes, from alchemists to troubadours. So you probably need to experiment a bit to figure out what kind of characters you want in your party. Yeah, you really need a good balance of skills or you'll find the combat harder than it already is. What are you giving it overall, Hex? Well, this is a really deep dungeon crawler. There is so much to always be doing, tweaking your party to be the best that it can be. Get invested and you'll be playing this for a long time. I'm giving it four out of five rubber chickens. Yes, this is a meaty RPG, but be ready for it to get difficult if you don't know exactly what you're doing. I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens.